G'day and welcome back to RC Model Review. Something really interesting turned up on my bench today in the mailbag and it is what they call a pagoda antenna. Now this comes from a guy called Martin Bart. He's in Belgium, I think. Um, I don't know, what does it say on the thing? Yeah, Belgium. There they go. I wonder how many viewers I have in Belgium. Obviously I've got at least one. Now Martin sent me a package. He says this package contains four Pagoda One style antennas. And he hopes he's packed them well enough to survive the New Zealand Postal Service. And here you go, Martin, if you're watching, you did a wonderful job in packaging. They have arrived safely and soundly. Very good. Now, he says that uh, these antennas are circularly polarized and they've got better um, axial ratios than most other circularly polarized antennas. He's, uh, there's quite a long letter here. He's got some information, I think, or he's planning to put some information on his website. I'll put a link to his website in the description of this video. But basically, these are circularly polarized antennas which are designed to be better than the traditional skew planar or cloverleaf antennas in terms of their circular polarization because n no antennas are perfect. And your circular polarized antenna, if it's a left-hand antenna, it will still put a little bit of right hand out. And if it's a right-hand antenna, it'll put a bit of left hand out. They're not perfect. And the goal of these antennas is to be as perfect as possible. And so they're really unconventional, unusual in their construction. Let's take a closer look at one of these things, see what we can discover. Right, if we take a look at the top of this antenna, we can see there's a circuit board and it has some active copper elements etched onto it. These elements obviously are a specific length and they're organized so as to provide a particular phase relationship between that plate and the plate below, which looks very similar. So the, the spacing between those two plates and the positioning of those active copper elements produces the circularly polarized antenna. Now there's also something interesting here. We've got a little disc down here as well. I suspect this is kind of a a ballon or, or a block to try and stop the coax from radiating because one of the problems we have with a lot of circularly polarized antennas is that they are not perfectly balanced so you get some current flowing in the screen of the cable which can upset the axial ratio so that can act like a linear antenna the actual cable itself starts to radiate and what I think Martin's tried to do here is reduce that with this little piece down the bottom there because that this piece and this piece are both connected to the screen of the coax. Now this is really kind of interesting. It's, uh, I'm keen to give these a go. Focus. Come on. Magic words. Come on. Focus. Please. No, it's not going to focus. Damn it. Should have gone to manual focus. If I move my hand up here, it might do it. Let's have a look. Go. Go. Gadget. Go. No, not going to work. Oh, yeah, there you go. So yeah, I'm really keen to try these out. Now I do have another antenna shootout video planned because I've had a few antennas come in since I did the first one. And I'll be particularly testing for the ability of this antenna to reject um, cross polar or reverse polarized uh, signals by uh, using that little metal plate. Now, if it was going to go into production, the only things I would suggest to Martin are putting some kind of um, solid material between these two plates because if these plates get skewed, if one's going to be at an angle to the other, that will dramatically affect the performance I would expect in terms of polarization. And also have the whole thing sort of protected inside a plastic dome if you can. But yeah, just some kind of foam or something in there perhaps. Um, you'd have to adjust the spacing to compensate for the different dielectric constant of whatever insulator you put in there. But that's a fairly simple thing to calculate. And this would be really interesting. So I'm going to try these out. And as I say, I don't expect to get much more range with them. But what I do expect is to get a lot less uh, interference in terms of multipathing and the effect of the Fresnel zone. So there you go. Pretty interesting. Now, as I say, he sent me four of these, which is quite good because it means I'm going to have a chance to Try them out with other people as well. There we go, four antennas. And I will uh, certainly hurry up the antenna shootout review because this, I can't wait to see how it works. And there's the letter he sent me, lots and lots of information there, um, which I'll be browsing through. He's also obviously done some homework and done some simulations because he's also put some graphs there of the performance of these antennas versus the traditional skew planer or cloverleaf antenna. What I might do actually is I will just... Uh, pan down a bit, I'll try and pull in a bit, hopefully it'll stay focused, so that if you want to you can pause and read that if you're in HD. Hopefully, maybe you can, maybe you can't. So there you go, here's some other information, these are, there you go, same, pause it and read it if you want to. That's it, so just thought I'd show you those because they're so exciting and they just arrived, and stay tuned because I'll be covering those now, I've got to get back to some other stuff, such as these uh, electronic theory uh, videos, which are taking so much longer than I thought they would. In the meantime, if you've got questions about these, um, why don't you ask me? Or you can go to uh, Martin's website. There's a link in the description. You can ask him there. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.